Hi there, let's see some intonation in Dutch in this video. Uh, this question was asked in the comments by uh, Shaista. And Shaista asked, well, how do you do that? How do you variate when you're, you're, you're speaking or when you're reading a text or when you're speaking? Um, where do you put the intonation? Does it go up? Does it go down? Does it go same way? Well, so let's uh, learn the main rules of intonation in Dutch. When you're saying a sentence, either it's an affirmative sentence, as it's called, so uh, an affirmation or a statement, or it's a question. So you have two options. Either it's a question or it's not a question. That's maybe easier to remember. When you're asking a question, then the intonation is more or less the same, and then near the end it goes up. With the other uh, options, the intonation is more or less the same, and then it goes down near the end of the sentence. And that is the main rule of intonation. Let's take a look at the following sentences. Morgen ga ik niet werken. That's an affirmation, a statement, it's not a question, so you go down a little at the end. Morgen ga ik niet werken. Alright, so werken, it goes a little bit down. Not much, but just a little. Uh, and the question, uh, ga je morgen niet werken? So, ga je morgen niet werken? Go a little bit up at the end of the sentence. Where exactly? Hmm, well, near the end of the sentence, usually the last word. There are no exact rules on this, uh, on, on the intonation. All right, so is that it? Well, no. Uh, when you want to accentuate, when you want to put a stress on, on something, then you're also go going to use your intonation to put a stress on the thing you want to stress. For example, morgen ga ik niet werken. And then I put the emphasis on morgen. And what does it mean? Well, tomorrow I'm not going to work. And for example, it's Saturday and tomorrow is Sunday. And someone asks you, oh, are you going to work tomorrow? <laughs> tomorrow I'm not going to work. Uh, morgen ga ik niet werken. So that's to put the accent there. The day after tomorrow, on Monday, unfortunately, you might have to go to work. So... Uh, you want to accentuate that Sunday, holiday, no work, morgen ga ik niet werken. But, if I would be asking to two of you, uh, like uh, two people, uh, and one of them is going to work, and the other one is not going to work, and you're the one that's not going to work, then you're going to say, morgen ga ik niet werken. And then you put the stress on the ik. Tomorrow, I am not going to work. But the other person, uh, and the other person will have to work. Or you can also put the accent on werken. Uh, morgen ga ik niet werken. Uh, to say that you're going to do something else than to work tomorrow. So, that's it for the accents. And one last part that is uh, also a little important is... Maybe you've heard it when I said the first sentence, Morgen ga ik niet werken. The morgen. Where is the accent in the word? Where is the stress here? Well, the stress is on the first syllable. So a syllable is morgen. Mor is the first syllable. Gen is the second syllable. Uh, so the first part of the word. That's where you put the accent in Dutch. And when you're reading a text, you're going to put the accent usually on this, uh, on the first syllable, on the first part of the word. However, it's Dutch, so there are exceptions. Uh, if there's a prefix to the word, then usually we're not going to uh, accentuate or put the stress on the prefix. For example, bewerken. Bewerken. So you're going to put a stress on the second part, not on this prefix. And prefixes are things like be, ver, ont, uh, things that on themselves do not mean much. Uh, 
All right. Of course, there are exceptions to that. Uh, for example, foreign words like communicatie comes from French and English. Communicatie, there uh, the stress is on the third syllable. Yeah, that's something you have to learn um, to put the right emphasis on the right part of the word. And there are many exceptions uh, to that. One last part about intonation, that's to say bye. And this one student told me that people sing when they say bye. And I was like, wait, no, we don't sing when we're saying bye. But when you're saying dag, then it's like singing. Or in the Netherlands, doei, tot ziens. That's uh, singing. So, yeah, you could also say it's a way to um, to use your intonation to say something. All right. So remember uh, questions. Uh, your intonation goes up at the end. Other sentences, intonation goes down at the sentence. You can accentuate uh, certain words. Uh, and usually the accent on the word falls on the first syllable. So one more word to say. Tot ziens!